Hi there, it's Pete the Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords and today I'm going to be unboxing this. It is Disrupt and that's from Triple Meeple Games coming uh, to Kickstarter dead soon and we're going to jump straight in and take a look at the box um, and all that's inside it and say a little bit about the game. Basically this is a prototype so everything you see in here is potentially going to change throughout the Kickstarter, although knowing um, the last few games that uh, Triple Meeple have put out, we see that they, the quality of the prototype, it feels game ready when you uh, when you see inside. So Disrupt, basically you're, it's kind of a, a kind of Silicon Valley startup game where you're going to be playing one of four characters, you're only going to be the startupper, you're going to be who's going to be coming up, the entrepreneur, coming up with those brand new ideas. You're going to go into some kind of cryptocurrency. Are you going to be doing the next big streaming platform or the next big thing in social networking? The choice is yours if you're the startupper. You might be the BPO. Your job then is to try and invest in developing those projects. Obviously, for a price, you're going to try and push those projects on, move them on, but of course, that's how you're going to gain your money. Maybe you're the angel investor. You're coming in with loads of money just to see buy the, buying and shelling, selling shares at just the right point to try and push that product on and get the most money as you sell the shares once it becomes famous. Or perhaps you are the market leader. You've already been there, done that and got the t-shirt. You own the big companies. The, they, you have got that experience. And your job is basically trying to keep the startup upper from breaking into the market, putting things in the way of them, bit of take that, bit, of, bit causing them problems. Or maybe you come in just at the right time with all the money to buy that product just at the right time to prevent them from taking your market share. So there's a whole load of interaction in this game as you seek to become the richest, having, you know, gain the most money in this game. Looking at the box, I think it tells you, you know, it's a, I think it's a really nicely designed box, really clean. Um, a lot of a lot of games nowadays is a huge amount of artwork. I like the fact that this keeps it really, really clean. It definitely looks different. Um, simpler, you know, iconography on the down the side. It's a one to four player game, plays in about 90 minutes and is for 14 plus. Just take you around the sides of the box. There's nothing on the back of the box because at the minute, this, as I said, this is already a prototype, but let's just take a look inside and see what you're going to get within the box. Really looking forward to getting this to the table and playing it this week with the rest of the Hairy Game Mods. So let's start with these meeples. These look absolutely stunning. There are four different colors because it's a four player game. Um, and one of the main elements of the game is the worker placement. So we've got these beautifully screen printed meeples. So you've got orange and blue meeples there. And we've got the black and the white meeples there. Looking really, really nice. Love a screen printed meeple. You've then got alongside that, depending on which of those four characters you want to be, you've got your own little marker. Um, that's going to be moving on one of the many tracks in this game that you're going to keep be keeping where where you are in terms of turn order and other bits. So you've got there you have a little starter upper token. Here is uh, the market leader token. Unsurprisingly, the little uh, set of wings there for the angel investor. And here. The BPO, the business process outsourcer, is going to offer loads of solutions to strengthen any of those projects. So that's your meeples and your uh, tokens that sort of follow where you, whereabouts you are in the game in one of the tracks on the board. So that then we have even more absolutely lovely wooden resources. And again, Rip always impressed with triple meeples. Uh, the component quality of what they do is always really, really nice. And bearing in mind, this is a prototype. So there are sort of three, three of the main resources in the game. One of those is likes. The next one is your experience. And then you also have innovation. So you're going to be gaining and spending those throughout the game. So there are all the resources, huge bag of those. Another thing that you're going to be um, using in the game are these plastic cubes. And these are for, 
Oh, there we go. Let's just get three different. There are four different colours. Three are for in-game. One's kind of for the end of game scoring stuff. Um, but you're going to be working through projects, and these projects are going to be being given as part of your actions potentially, and some of the cards that you play. You're going to be giving them different. Um, just these little plastic cubes that represent um, development, um, design and marketing, that kind of stuff. And then at the end of the game, depending on how the cubes have amassed on the, um, the little project boards for that particular um, idea, that idea that you've created, that business you've created, you're going to be given these red cubes. There are 10 cubes per project. And depending on um, the ratio of the who, who's got the most green, who's got the most blue, and who's got the most orange cubes on that board, you're going to get different numbers of red cubes. They get divided up. And then there are some other tiles that I'll show you in a minute that decide whether you're going to win or lose um, some extra tokens. And then finally, dependent on whether it's a, a bullish or a bearish market, that's going to have an impact as well on the um, overall scoring of those red cubes. That becomes important because it's the red, the number of red cubes against each of the projects that are out there decides how much the shares are worth at the end of the game. And obviously, depending on who's got the most shares in the different companies, multiply that by the, the amount that those shares are worth are going to decide how much money is left for each of the different players in the game. So let's take a look at some of these other resources. So we talked about the projects um, that the, the starter upper is going to be developing. There are, you have here three project tiles that are they're, they're, these are um, they're double layer dual layer boards. So that section is going to hold the uh, tokens, those little plastic cubes, to show the different the, how much time has been spent in marketing, how much time has been spent in design, the various other sections. That's where those go, and they're going to move along the project timeline on the board, which we'll get to shortly. Um, those are just some those little plastic poppers to help with your scoring chart, which I'll show you in a second. So let's have a look at what else we've got in the box. Only a few more bits to show you. So let's take a look at the board. And again, I just... So here's, he says, here's the board. Uh, really, really clean. Not no, so it's not one of those boards with huge amounts of artwork, but I think that really fits for the game. It's a game about selling stocks and sh stocks and shares, about dividing up, uh, dividing up your projects, moving your project through the project timelines, um, and then you've got various worker placement spots here. What I really like with the worker placement spots is basically. First player gets to place the worker at the top and move down and do all of the four actions available. Next player placing a worker there can only do three and so on. So being first player in this game and being first to get to one of those um, tracks allow you obviously to do more actions and then and potentially prevent other people from doing these actions. And there are very and uh, here are the board that's going to be telling you where you, you put your shares, the different companies go into here, and you can buy. You know, start, buy them at low, four, four million, and maybe then sell them up at eight million. You can move, let's so say these move up different um, cards, different abilities will move the price of those shares up and down. And again, like the angel investor, he's going to be wanting to buy in early and then sell um, when they improve. The BPO is going to be able to help support and develop that product and get it moving up. So number of different um, options available for you on the board and places where you're going to be playing your different cards, which we'll come to in just a minute. So each player has their own set of cards. So these are the starter uppers cards. You can see the starter upper symbol on the back. In terms of card quality, they're, they're a nice card. They've got a linen feel to them. Um, they're pretty good card stock. Take a look at the fronts. Really nice, each card different design. And in terms of the anatomies of a card, you've got the cost of the card, you've got um, some of the effects. You'll notice this one, these have got different colors, these are all blue, then you've got green. 
These match the uh, parts of the project where these cards can be played. So when you're playing cards, you play them onto that project track, space for cards in each, and then at the end of the turn, you'll then go, for, go through and resolve the different parts of the cards that you've played. So you've got, each of you have a deck of cards. We'll have a look at another one, all of which have got sort of, it's kind of, this is the, this is the um, market leaders set of cards. So here you've got cost to play the card is going to be um, one, one experience and two likes worth five, um, five and money at the end. And it tells you what this one is. This is foreclosure. This is select a share another player owns and auction it starting at one, one, uh, one money or one million, whatever the M is. I'm not sure that it's money or millions. So each of you have got your own set of cards that will do different things, have different impacts, and allow you to play the game. You choose when you play those, etc., um, during various phases in the game. Always love a little help card. So this double-sided help card. So first of all, it tells you the structure of the round, and then on the back explains how you're going to manage the final scoring. So in general, in this game, you've got um, there are six game rounds. You've got the operation phase where whoever's first player starts placing the worker until all three workers have been placed, and then you collect all the workers back. Then you go on to that project phase, where you're gonna be activating all of the icons in the workflow, so that includes all the cards that have been played. Um, you're gonna move the project along its pipeline, and you're gonna place a new project if a free light pipeline becomes available. And then at the end, which we'll get to in a minute, you have the event phase. So we'll just find the event cards, here they are. So you have a, a stack of event cards, and these are gonna do, you know, as always with events, they're gonna throw things out in the game. So disruptive technology, in turn order, all players add a market cube to a project. So these are the market cubes. Um, remember that's one of the options, the type of market, uh, of the type of cube, and you can choose which project you're gonna put that onto. So if you've got shares in a particular project that you wanna do really well on, and you're gonna put your, your cubes onto that one, whereas if you're wanting to try and maybe stop that from happening, you might decide to place on another one that's gonna throw somebody else off. So being aware of what everybody else is doing is really important in this game. And in terms of the idea of that kind of business world where everybody's trying to out business and out maneuver the other person, other people and the other people in business, that is what this game is gonna be all about. So in terms of gameplay, this is, although, you know, it is a Euro, it is worker placement, there is quite a high level of that, of interaction in some respects, because you are trying to undercut each other, buy and sell things, um, and at times you might make decisions that might be not the best decision, decision for you at that point, but would potentially prevent somebody else from um, gaining uh, resource or making a re you know making some real progress. The other thing that you can do those cards when you are play when you are resolving the cards you can choose whether you resolve your card. You can also barter and um, kind of work with the, those around the table because if you've got a card that you know is going to have a negative impact on somebody, you might say right well I might choose not to do that. But how much is it worth? Um, and you can have that kind of a little bit of. Um, one-upmanship on the table and they can decide whether they're going to give you some cash back or maybe some resources, I think cash to prevent you from using that card or ask you not to use that card. And all of those deals that happen that you can't do any backstabbing, you can't take the deal back once it's been done, you have to give up that cash and um, the person who's agreed to not play their card can't play, can't use that card. So here we have a whole load, we'll have a quick look, punch a couple of these out. So here are some of the examples of the, um, these are the tiles that are gonna go, good solid tiles, they punch really nicely. So that's card flicks. We have board tube and we have dice coin and these, and there are some others. We've, um, these are the companies that you're gonna be starting up and the things that you're gonna be selling and buying shares in. Um, you have these tokens, which are the starter upper has. And only the starter upper knows about these. These are secret, and what they're going to do is when the starter upper plays, um, develop, starts a project, they're going to choose one of these that's going to stay with that project but won't flip until the end of the game. And what this will do is it will take this one will add 
a blue cube and remove a green cube. So knowing that, um, the person who's doing the Star Trek patch just has that little bit of information about how end game scoring might work. So can play a bit of a game against those who may have some other um, abilities to change what's going on. Talked about the end game scoring element, about the um, whether it's a bearish or a bullish market. Similarly, um, you have these bear and bear and bull tokens that are going to add or take away um, some of those red cubes that are all important because those red cubes are the multiplier against the share value. I really like this. Obviously, this is a game all about um, investment and money, and so how better um, to score the game than using your little credit card. So really nice little um, addition to the game here. So you've got your, your credit card, and I'll, I'll dummy making it up. He says I've got it the right way up. Do it that way. So you can spin those round and that will total up your cash throughout the game. So really like the look of this game. Component quality, as always, from Triple Meeple is really, really nice. Um, so this will be out really, really shortly, coming, launching on May the 16th. So go and have a look at it. The component quality of just the prototype is already absolutely solid. And the only thing that can happen is it can improve potentially during the Kickstarter. I'm not sure what they've got planned. There's mention in the rule book already of uh, stretch goals in terms of additional possible cards. It's going to add variability to the game. Um, rule book isn't here because it's a rule book in process. I've seen the online version of the rule book. It reads really nicely, really visual. Um, examples of each of the rules in play, giving a played example, which I always like, helps you get your head around it. And you also, of course, have that little reminder about what you're doing in each round, how many rounds there are, and then you flip it over and it reminds you of how you're going to manage that final scoring. So, if you've liked the look of the product, you've liked the look of what we've seen in this prototype, make sure you get on May the 16th to check out Disrupt and keep an eye out for our review video. We're getting this to the table tomorrow evening and having a look and a play through Disrupt. Love the look of it so far.